at it for another episode of the Dine Sports Podcast. Being joined by Devin Gallant to help us break down a wild Super Bowl 58 last night as the Chiefs emerge victorious in overtime. Dev, how are you doing today, bud? I'm pretty good. Uh, I think San Fran's still trying to review the overtime rules. Uh, apparently, they didn't know what was going on. But uh, yeah, it turned out to be a great game last night. Yeah, well, we might as well start there, right? Because <laughs> that, that was something that even when the game was going on live, you know, you and I and uh, another friend who is a Chiefs fan, we were all watching this game. We kind of turned to one another and went, does it not make sense that if you win the overtime coin toss, you want the ball second? Like, did Warner just autopilot there? Or And then you get to today, and it turns out that they actually just had no plan whatsoever because we've got two quotes here that I had queued up. So <laughs> Eric Armstead. I didn't even know about the new playoff overtime rule. So it was a surprise to me. I didn't even really know what was going on in terms of that. Not a great look right there. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got our friend uh, Juice who then went and said, you know what? I didn't even realize the playoff rules were different in overtime. I assume you want the ball to score a touchdown and win. I guess that's not the case. I totally, I don't totally know the strategy there. We hadn't talked about it. No. So all of that now being said, I mean, we'll, we'll dissect the game in greater detail. There were multiple times that San Francisco lost this game leading up to overtime. Absolutely. But did they really absolutely shoot themselves in the foot here on that coin toss? Or do you think they, you know what, they still had their chances and you know what, no harm, no foul. How, how do you view this playoff debacle overtime rule? Well, like you said, we were talking about it last night live. And I, I, I just like Armstead and Juice there, like I didn't understand the rules so you brought it up first and you were like wait why would they not take the ball second and the entire drive home with craig i was sitting there i was like i need to find an argument to argue against kyle <laughs> because i know his stance on this and it's just, i i can't find one unless they were looking over at the sideline and we're like okay we have kansas city's defense exhausted right now let's go out but you need to score a touchdown if you're getting the ball first there's no yeah. way you can settle for that field goal you're just putting yourself at such a deficit now Mahomes knows he has four downs to play with on every first down yeah and they're gonna march down and score on you I so I cannot find an argument to take the ball first yeah well and even one of the Chiefs players said afterwards that yeah we've been practicing this since the beginning of the season we exactly. all for the last two weeks we knew what the overtime <clears throat> rules were and a fun tidbit was if the Niners had have scored a touchdown KC, well, again, easy for them to say now because they don't actually have to go and do it. But apparently they were prepared to go down and go for two to try and win it outright right there at the game. So, again, it's relitigating something that's already happened, but you can't help but figure, right? Like, why would you not want that extra down the entire drive knowing that, hey, even if they do come down and score a touchdown here or a field goal, whatever the case is, we've got four to go as opposed to three. And then you're playing the field position game as well, too. Yeah. Just another, another part of the game that Andy Reed was just had his team more prepared than Shanahan did. Like they were just ready for all these scenarios um, to happen. They knew what exactly what they're going to do. Like you said, they're already planning to go. If they got the ball first, go down and then get the extra two points. They yeah. knew they looked at every scenario and had to like, a script for it, which is what Andy Reid with two weeks off is just brilliant at. Yeah. Well, it brings up a good point here as well on in terms of the coaching front. Like, obviously, you know, we, we've got Andy Reid who has had his moments early in his career, mm -hmm. whether it was time management or using timeouts or even being unfamiliar with rules himself back in <laughs> the city of brotherly love. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Kyle Shanahan now, this is kind of the – third maybe even fourth if you want to make some nfc championship kind of arguments yeah. here big game that he has been involved in where he's kind of blown it right and you would think if anyone in nfl history was going to be aware of the overtime rules it would be the only person in the game who was involved in the other previous super bowl <laughs> overtime like <laughs> it's just such a glaring oversight that it's almost incomprehensible. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you know what? That's too many game, big games that he's blown. You know what? He's not a good coach. Obviously, you need to get to the Super Bowl to even have a chance at it. We're not saying he's a bad coach, but 
the, there's now a track record here. Like this isn't just a one-off. Oh, the moment got too big for him. There's there's some history here of him in big moments, either trying to get too cute with the play calling or getting away from what got them into the lead in the first place or whatever the case might be like his propensity to want to throw the ball when he has the lead as opposed to running the ball that's been working for them the entire game has reared its ugly head several times now so I, I, I'm not sure where you really go with this as a Niners fan because you can't fire the guy but at the same time you probably want to based on some of the post-game comments that are coming out here no, I have in my notes that I was like, is is Shanahan now the, you know, 2010 version of Andy Reid? When he was still with the Eagles, he it's a had... little bit more slim and trim there. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're not comparing weights or anything, but, you yeah. know, uh, he's still with the Eagles. They hadn't gone over the hump. He had an excellent regular season record. He's a great offensive mind. Like, And I honestly believe that Shanahan's changed how... NFL coaches run offenses. I think he's brilliant, but he it's almost getting to that point where it's like, do you, are you going to need a change in scenery? Are you going to need to like take a year off and then go to a different team and kind of re kick start, like get rid of this monkey on your back? Because this is a, again, like you said, multiple, multiple big playoff losses where he's, he's kind of at fault on this one. Yeah. Well, it's little things like that where, you know what? that's a hundred percent on the coaching staff. And uh, again, you can say, well, you know, someone else should have been delegated that duty. Kyle had other things going on. It all goes to the top, right? If your team is yeah. not prepared to know the rules when you're the only other person that's been involved in the playoff overtime or Super Bowl overtime in NFL history, like you got to wear that. And I mean, you know, you, you can point to a whole bunch of things uh, as far as where the game starts going wrong, but you know, obviously a psychological factor in seeing player after player on the Niners kind of go down with with freak injuries, really, as well, too, right? Weird. Like Dre Greenlaw oh my God. exploding Achilles, which, you know, at the time we were trying to figure out, okay, well, is it an Achilles? Is it an ACL? Like, what just happened here? Is it the turf? But then I started remembering as well is it too, taylor like, swift was it her fault did she do it yeah curse of the taylor swift something you know but uh that then i thought back and the finale of the regular season if you look at the nfl and the niners injury notes that week uh greenlaw was listed as achilles tendonitis for sitting out that final game mm -hmm. so it wasn't as freakish as we kind of initially thought as far as oh well, here's a perfectly healthy healthy guy he's excited about a big play and all of a sudden boom there goes his achilles and you know he's out for the game and it has a long road to recovery in a contract year coming up ahead for himself there but you know this is uh this there's a little bit more to it there and seeing like the heartbeat of a defense go out like that because him and fred warner are essentially the you know spoon that stirs the drink there on uh defense for the niners seeing him go out like multiple players said they were in tears in the locker room at halftime and then mm -hmm. trying to rally from that so there's psychological factors there but that's getting back to the original point of that's where you need strong coaching even more to have these guys get refocused and next man up mentality and hey here's the adjustments we need to make now that we've lost a few key players on both sides of the ball because you know Kittle ran to the locker room and was out for a couple of plays there with some sort of shoulder injury and then he returned and you know so there, there was a lot that really got heaped onto that coaching staff and I don't think they did a great deal a great job of handling that pressure.